and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books and Minnie. Well, Minnie's actually very on trend for today unlike myself because today's video we're going to be going through the grey bookshelves on my the grey books on my bookshelves. This is the last in the bookshelf tour. I've worked my way through all of the colours of my bookshelf including the favourites at the top and this was the last few that we had left to do and I say few because this is probably the least amount of books I've got in terms of colour on my shelves. I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen books which is unheard of. If you think about all the blue books I've got and all the white books I've got, wowza. Um, so yeah, but normally I wear something of the colour of the book, uh, the bookshelf that we're doing, but I'm actually doing Outfits October at the moment and I just couldn't make it work. So I'm wearing black and white, which when you mix them together when you were little, used to make grey, didn't it? And I've got a grey cat here, so let's get going. So as I said, 12 books to work my way through. Normally I tend to use these videos as a bit of an unhaul or maybe adding something to my TBR for next month. So let's see if anything happens with that. Um, and let's get cracking. So the first one is Seal Skin by Sue Bristow. I've got a feeling Mercedes, I either got this from Mercedes or Mercedes bought it for me for my birthday or Christmas. Donald is a young fisherman eking out a lonely living on the west coast of Scotland. One night he witnesses something miraculous and makes a terrible mistake. His actions change his lives, not only his own but those of his family and the entire tightly knit community in which they live. Can he ever atone for the wrong he has done and can love grow when the foundation is violence? Based on the legend of the Selkies, this has definitely come from Mercedes, she loves the Selkie. Seals can transform into people. Seal skin is a magical story evoking the harsh beauty of the landscape, the resilience of its people, both human and animal, and the triumph of hope over fear and prejudice. Bloody hell, speaking of putting things on my uh, TBR for next month, that's going on my TBR for next month, so lovely. Thing is about these grey books have been tucked down away there so I don't often get to look at them. Silver Sparrow is a book that I've read and was one of my favourite books from um, a couple of years ago. Uh, this is by Tiari Jones. You know Tiari Jones who wrote An American Marriage. This was um, a, a story about a man who has two families. He's sort of like public family and then um, a private family and the private family know about the public family but the public family don't know about the private family and it's about the two daughters sort of coming um, meeting one another and um, yeah I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really really greatly written and sort of um the depiction of sort of sisterhood unknown sisterhood that sort of like if that's a if that's a thing um but yeah i really really liked it and enjoyed it very much it used to be one of my favorites i think maybe i downgraded it from the favorite shelves um but yeah i think that's probably due a reread at some point as well then I've got this, which I've never read and I must read. It's Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. It's a long-form poem, um, which is about, uh, well, it's about, it's a retelling of something, isn't it? I can't think. In a London flat, two young boys face the unbearable sadness of their mother's sudden death. Their father, a Ted Hughes scholar and scruffy romantic, imagines... It's Crow by Ted Hughes is the, the retelling. <laughs> Imagines a future of well-meaning visitors and emptiness. In this moment of despair, they are visited by Crow, antagonist trickster, healer, babysitter. This sentimental bird is drawn to the grieving family and threatens to stay until they no longer need him. This extraordinary debut full of unexpected humour and emotional truth marks the arrival of a thrilling and significant new author. Yeah, I keep meaning to read this. I do. I do keep meaning to read this. Then I've got a book that I got for Christmas last year from David. That's A Cheesemonger's History of the British Isles by Ned Palmer. I'm very much into history of places told through another way. And sort of like that being food is an absolute bonus. So this is A History of the British Isles told through cheese. Um, it looks as though it's peppered with, um, oh well here we go, Victorian cheese press still used to make Treth Hohen's Care Philly, so peppered with beautiful pictures all to do with cheese, and I fucking love cheese. Patrick Rance, the man who discovered Britain's cheeses, people really did wear those shirts in the 1970s, though the monocle was exceptional. So yeah, I, I need to get to this, making the Wash Rhine's Mont Dior cheese, did the French get their techniques from Irish medieval cheese makers? I would like to read about the cheese, eat the cheese, look at cheese, think about cheese, yum. I would like that very much. Am I going to put that on my TBR for next month? I don't know if I'll get round to it next month, that's the only thing. We'll read it at some point. I should read that before, before Christmas though, really. Then I've got two little hardback books, one that I've read, Agatha Christie's, and then there were none. There's a whole series of these. I bought these, I think I bought these both secondhand from Armchair Books in Edinburgh. Um, and, and, and then there were none is like my favourite Agatha Christie book. It's the first one I read and it remains to be my favourite. It's set on an island and there's um, a cast of 10 characters who gradually get killed off as the book goes on. Um, and then it's all sort of brought together with a sort of um, 
little extra chapter about what had happened. I really, really liked it. I've read it twice. Um, I read it the first time I got it and thought it was amazing. And then David watched the film of it while I was reading it. I didn't get even halfway through it, but I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, again, the second time and him sort of like it. Um, and me reading it a second time and sort of knowing what was going on as well. I'm surprised I didn't put that on my TBR for this month, it being slightly spooky, but very, very good. If you're, if you're yet to read an Agatha Christie, well, if you're yet to read an Agatha Christie, but you'd like to, but you're well prepared to start with the best one, in my opinion, give this one a go. What is your favourite Agatha Christie? Um, I struggle with the ones that are sort of like Poirot or... Um, who's the other person that she writes about? I like the ones which don't have like a main character. Oh, David's ringing me. Sorry, two minutes. Hello, my baby! He's late home on the on the um, train, so that's good that I haven't started making dinner yet. Okay, so then next up is the Penelope ad by Margaret Atwood. Um, read many Margaret Atwoods over the uh, years, but not the Penelope ad, which is a retelling of the Odyssey um, told, well, in Homer's account of the Odyssey, Penelope, wife of Odysseus and cousin of the beautiful Helen of Troy, is portrayed as the quintessential faithful wife. Her story a salutary lesson through the ages. Left alone for 20 years when Odysseus goes off to fight in the Trojan War after the abduction of Helen, Penelope manages, in the face of scandalous rumours, to maintain the kingdom of Ithaca, bring up her wayward son and keep over a hundred suitors at bay simultaneously. Oh, this sounds good. That's what happens when things are just languishing on the bottom shelf. You don't really think about it. Will I put that on the TBR? I'm, I'm nervous about putting things on the TBR because November is my sort of like rereading books of my favourites because it's my birthday month and like getting stuff finished before the Christmas books kicked in. It's also going to be busy because we're getting married in December so like things are ramping up. I won't put it on there but I'll think about that for next year. Then I've got here um, Ali Smith's Winter. Um, this is uh, the fourth book in the seasonal quartet although I can't, I don't think it is the fourth because I think it started with Autumn, the second book in the seasonal quartet. Um, I've read this and listened to the audiobook of it. It's very good and wintry. Um, as the cover and title would suggest. Um, and these books are sort of really um, timely. So this book was published in, I think, 2019, 2017. Time just goes so fast. And very sort of like timely of things that have been happening in terms of immigration laws and stuff like that. Um, and this focuses around um, a, a man, Art, and him bringing um, a woman home um, to his mother's house for Christmas, um, a woman who, he's, who, who he doesn't know very well. Um, and it's sort of like... Christmassy in a sort of like sometimes Christmases can be a bit awkward way that sort of way um but I very much enjoyed reading it and listening to the audiobook I may well listen to the audiobook again this year um then I've got a poetry collection this is a proof copy of these are the words by Nikita Gill this is actually blue on the front but silver that counts to me as grey if I was colouring in I would be using a silver a grey pencil to, to depict silver um and this is these are the words for girlhood womanhood and sisterhood for the highs and lows of love for understanding family for when you are hurting for when you need to protest for when you hate your body for when you need to heal for friendship and found family now I love family family and I really would like to think about books and stuff that are to do with found family it's one of my favorite things so that is going on the TBR for next month it's a YA poetry collection it sounds amazing then I've got and I don't often feel guilty about books because I love reading you all love reading I assume you're here because you love reading but there are a collection of books that I seem to buy and just not get round to reading. Now, I've got this whole big shelf selection of books that I'm not, not getting round to reading. But Persephone books, which are beautiful and grey, I seem to just buy them and do nothing with them. <laughs> I literally haven't read one. I've even got them out from the library. I think I'm just so taken in by how beautiful they are. Now, this is an independent publisher um, called Persephone Books that publishes mainly... Um, works of uh, fiction by um women and sort of like sort of forgotten um forgotten books from the past and they all look like this this one i bought second hand does she try and get the sticker off and it be sticky underneath sticky underneath um they all look like this gray and then they in the side inside they have all sort of like vintage um different patterns as the end papers and if you buy them new which i haven't done in this occasion you get a matching bookmark that go with that um so that is miss bunkle married by de stevenson and also they don't have a blurb so you never really know what the books are about then lettuce delma by susan miles that's the end papers there this one is very dark gray compared to the rest of them 
Still Missing by Beth Gutchen. I think this was the second, yeah, this was second hand as well. I love this knitted pattern at the end. Um, the Wise Virgins by Leonard Wolf, oh, which I have got the bookmark in because this was new. Um, my cousin Laura bought this for me. I'm going to take that bookmark out so I can use it um, for my birthday many, many years ago. And then one that I bought really recently, um, which is, a, I, I think there might have been a specialist series of um, Persephone books which have beautiful portraits on the front. This is Cheerful Weather for the Wedding by Julia Strachey. And this cover painting is Girl Reading, which was painted in 1932 by Harold Knight. Um, so yeah, we've got five Persephone books of which I've read none. So I do need to round to get round to to read in one of them. Maybe I'll slip the smallest one on the TBR for next month. Do you know what? I'm gonna, why not? Um, so yeah, those are my grey books. Not many, like compared to the rest of the books, but still some interesting ones in there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the um the bookshelf tour that we've been doing sort of slowly slowly over the past couple of years I think I will start it again from next year and whereas I've done sort of like started with green then did a bit of yellow then blue then white then grey the light and finished on grey like I think maybe I'll start with the reds and work my way through and maybe do one a month um from next year um because things will have changed and I would have read things and I would have got rid of things and it'll be nice to revisit stuff and like I said like I've picked three books here to go on my TBR for next month I haven't got rid of any um but that sometimes happens as well. So I think I'll start again from next year. Um, but yeah, that's it from me. And I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye.